Hello, my name is Mary Matthews. I'm a therapist and I'm also a Christian transformational life coach. My channel is all about faith, family, and I'm starting a fitness journey as well. I'm married. I have three children. I'm, I'm really excited about this word. Yes, it is about the a wealth transfer. This word may not be for everybody and that is okay because I pray that it is going to um, really touch uh, the ear of those, the heart of those that need to hear it, that need an encouraging word, right? Because the chaos that is happening, it is meant for your cultivation. I know I've been experiencing a lot of tribulation and I have wondered like why God is this happening? And as I have pressed in, he has opened up my eyes to truly understand it so that I can walk in the authority and power that he has given me and be more strategic in how I war. You know, he's opening up um, just, just my heart uh, so that I can approach conflict differently, even in my own household, so that those relationships can be better developed before I receive even, you know, the, the more, the more that God wants to give me. And there's a scripture in John chapter 15, verse two, that says every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more. So some of us are like, hold on, because it says every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more. So some of us are like, I am doing what God has asked me to do. I'm being faithful, yet I still feel a uh, pain. You know, relationships are just, the people are walking away from me. My children are acting funny. My spouse is acting crazy. You know, so much is happening. Um, but he says, look, I'm, I'm pruning you to prepare you for more. OK, I'm, I'm pruning you so that you can be renewed and transformed. Right. And handle what it is that I want to give you. Right. He's like, I, if this didn't happen, if this pruning did not take place, there wouldn't be space enough to receive what I have in store for you. So I was like, oh, OK, God, to whom much is given, much is required. So if I. If I didn't allow God to develop me, if this pruning didn't happen, I wouldn't see the places that I need to see. It wouldn't uncover those spaces that I that need to be uncovered. And I wouldn't have the awareness to to take care of, you know, what is there, you know, or allow God to, to shape it. Right. So that I could be ready to receive more and handle the more that he wants to give me. OK. Right. And so. Y'all, this is amazing because the wealth transfer is not just about money, but it's about so much more. He wants to give us peace. He wants us to have good health. He wants us to have better relationships. He wants us to be unified. He wants us to know who our kingdom partners are. You know, there's just so much, you know, that he wants to give us, you know, just ideas, dreams, um, and not just to stay, you know, uh, trapped in potential, but he wants us to live in purpose. He wants us to give birth to purpose. OK, I'm just so excited. So he's been ministering to me through the life of Jacob. And we know that God made a covenant with Abraham and he said, Abraham, you are going to be the father of many nations. The father of many nations. And Abraham is like, hold on, I don't even have a child yet. Y'all, the things that, the, the way God works and what I'm understanding is he will do something that is so beyond what the mind can fathom because we can operate from a, a place of probability, a place of probability, what we can expect based off of history and what data says and what science says. But let me tell you, the truth will always override every fact, right? God's word is true. And that's why we also need the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. So he says, look, I'm going to make you the father of many nations and uh, your wife is going to get pregnant. You, she is going to conceive. She, The wife laughed because she's like, hold on, I am beyond childbearing age. So she laughed. But God will work in a way that you will know and can only give credit to God. God did that. OK, so she eventually conceives after trying to handle things her own way. So now we're, we're down at Isaac. 
there is a, a prophecy that the oldest is going to serve the youngest. Even there, you can see that there is a transfer of power or position because it is uh, more so the custom for the oldest to receive a blessing, you know, to step in. Um, uh, it is a part of the custom for that oldest to step in the blessing or to receive the blessing. Right. But it said the oldest is going to serve the youngest. So there's Esau and there's Jacob. And even uh, in uh, their mother's womb, there was conflict. OK, so they um, she gave birth and the parents had favorites. The father favorited um, uh, Esau and then the mother uh, favored Jacob. OK, Esau sold his birthright to Jacob because he was hungry one day. He's like, I really want some, you know, I really need to eat or I'm going to die. And um, Jacob took advantage of that <laughs> and um, he sold his birthright to him. Not only that, as the father was getting older and it was time to actually bless Esau, the mother was like, hold up. You know, she began to groom her son to take that that blessing. And Isaac's, you know, he had bad eyesight. So she dressed Jacob up in a way that would truly fool him and make Isaac think that Jacob was Esau because Esau was a hairy man. So she put hair on Jacob and then she cooked the stew in the way that she knew her husband would like it. So, you know, he you know, essentially Jacob manipulated and dis or deceived his father into blessing him. So he then got the blessing. Esau found out about it and he was mad. He was so mad that he wanted to kill his brother. So the mother sent Jacob away. Jacob goes and he's now headed to this land where his uncle is named Laban. On his way there, he stops in this place and he has a dream. Y'all, God is, he is definitely downloading. He speaks to us many times, especially through dreams. It's a time where we're settled. We're not moving around and busy. You know, so ask God, you know, for deeper revelation, ask God to help you to even remember your dreams. OK, so he goes to sleep and he has a dream. And so this is like Genesis uh, chapter 28 um, around. I want to say, let's see. This is. Uh, verse 13 to 15, and it says, then God was right before him saying, I am God, the God of Abraham and your father, Isaac. I'm giving you the ground on which you are sleeping to you and your descendants. Let me say that again. He said, I'm giving you, come on, I am giving you, I am transferring to you. I'm going to give you this ground, okay, that you're sleeping on. Some of y'all don't even know what you are sleeping on. You are sleeping on your inheritance. And if you do not align yourself with God, it can just be swept away or you won't claim it. But come on, like I'm telling you, if you had an inheritance with your name on it, wouldn't you want to know about it? Right? And if you are a child of God, you do. Okay. You are a kingdom citizen. There is an inheritance with your name on it. Be ready to receive and do your part. Commune with God, develop a relationship with God. So here's the next part. He says, your descendants will be as the dust of the earth and they will stretch from the west to the east and from the north to the south. They're going to be all over this map. Okay. And he said, I will stay with you I will protect you wherever you go. Come on, that is that is a part of it, protection, okay? Right? He has a position now. <laughs> he has protection. He's given he's going to be given land and he said everything I promised to you is going to happen. Another translation also says that uh, he saw a stair a staircase to heaven while in this dream and angels were ascending and descending. And when he woke up, he said, oh, my goodness, God is in this place. And I knew it not. My God, <laughs> what if you just didn't know? Right. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. Like, what if you just didn't know? What if you didn't know who you are in God? What if you didn't know what you, you know, what, what, um, how God thinks of you? You know, and we may not know it fully, but you can read his word and and and, and deepen your walk with him and be um, and become privy to it. You can understand it more because the more you understand how you are made in his image and 
you know, you, you tr put your trust in him, you will know his faithfulness and you will allow him to truly guide you because his ways are better than ours. Sometimes we, we can become just so discouraged when our plans don't work, you know, or when we experience pain in our lives. And the enemy is y'all. He's waiting right there since the beginning of time to create disconnection because he wants you to be completely disconnected from your purpose. But y'all, God says, I know the plans. In Jeremiah 29, 11, he knows the plans that he has for you, not plans to harm you, but plans for a hopeful future, plans to prosper you. OK, so he wakes up and he says, this is incredible. This is wonderful. This is God's house. This is the gate of heaven. Y'all, there is an open heaven. Like how relevant, y'all, is this? Like the transfer, he experienced a wealth transfer, okay? So next, he names that place Bethel. He leaves that place. And then on his journey, he sees a lot of um, animals like goats and uh, sheep. And he sees people. I think the goats and sheep are um, at this well uh, where they're drinking water. So he asks the people, do you know my uncle uh, Laban? And they're like, yes. He's like, well, how is he doing? OK, this is kind of my interpretation. <laughs> and they're like, all is well. He's good. OK, he has deep pockets. He's fine. All is well. Right. And they said, oh, his daughter is actually coming over here. Her name's Rachel. Here she is. And she's coming with a bunch of flock of of sheep and goats and, and, and cow and cows and all these other things. Right. So he greets her and then they go back. Uh, he ends up, uh, you know, falling in love with Rachel and everything is good at first between him and Laban. So Jacob asked his, you know, Laban, can I uh, marry Rachel? He says, OK, you have to work for me for seven years. You know, that is the custom. That is the culture. So he, he puts his work in. So now he wants to do things the right way. OK, now he's 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 wanting to uh, proceed the right way because he loved her. He was in love with Rachel. And the scripture says that he he loved her so much that the, that the time went by so fast. Y'all, I mean, it said that his heart was in it. You know, I prophesy that we'll even find um, our passion, you know, and that our heart uh, will be in it that it won't even feel like work. <laughs> Come on, you know, because we're we're working for a cause, a cause that has our heart in it. And maybe even there's a transfer there, a transfer again in position or or, or placement where where God is wanting you to uh, work for a cause that it doesn't even feel like work because you're passionate about it. My God. So the seven years goes by, right? And he actually ends up with Leah. Hmm. He was deceived. <laughs> My goodness. Um, and the father-in-law was like, well, actually, it is the custom that uh, we don't to give the youngest first. We give the oldest first. So he got played. Right. So the player gets played. Right. And then uh, he says, OK, work for another seven years and then I will give you Rachel. So he works for another seven years. Meanwhile, y'all, he is being treated unfairly by his father-in-law. There was even one instance or many instances where um, the scripture goes into, and, and please read this. So now we're in like chapter 29 and 30, where the father-in-law notices that Jacob is accumulating a lot of, of the animals. You know, his herd is getting bigger. So he gets jealous of this. He gets upset. So he says all of the uh, sheep and the cows or the goat that are born, if they're born with dots on them, you're going to take that. And I'm going to take the ones that uh, are without blemish. You know, God sees it. God is so faithful. I mean, and it also shows how merciful he is. No matter, you know, like what we've done, when we really commit our ways, when we come with a contrite heart, when we allow God to uh, just truly uh, do a work within us, he will redeem us. He will restore us because he loves us so. So he saw what was happening. Uh, and it was, a, it was already, you know, his promise, y'all. The promise, it was still there. 
You know, the promise is still there. You, we just have to come back to God, no matter like, you know, what we've done. If you commit, you know, your ways to him, he will establish your plans. OK, so Jacob, you know, had committed his ways to God and God saw what was happening. And <clears throat> you know what he did? He started allowing the animals that were being born to be born with dots on them. Right. The ones that the ones, the very ones that Laban said, OK, those the ones with dots are going to go to you. The ones without blemish are going to go to me. And he said that also because there weren't many that were being born with dots on them. Suddenly, all of them are being born with like blemish. So <laughs> then he's like, OK, well, the ones that are being born with stripes go to you and then, you know, et cetera. Right. So all of them are being born with these things on them. So they still function well. They were still fine, essentially. But the whole point is God transferred. Come on. He transferred everything that Laban um, was getting or had, and he was transferring it to Jacob. There was a wealth transfer that ha that was happening uh, in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the accusation. So now Laban's sons are mummering and complaining. Come on. There are some folks around you that don't understand the anointing that you have. And they are murmuring and they're complaining. They just don't get it. OK. Right. But what does Jacob do? You know, he continues to press into God and God speaks to him. And he said, you know, now it is time to leave this place. You know, maybe it's a job that he's telling you to leave. You know, um, press into God, pray about it. Maybe it's a, a, a for some friendships that he's saying, you know, it's time to go. Maybe it's time to to draw um, some healthy boundaries between some people, family members or a relationship because they can't um, they cannot go where you're going and you cannot stay where they are. OK, it's not it's not meant to happen. It was just for the season. OK, it was meant for you to receive something that God wanted to download to you for that season. And and where he is taking you is going to be it's not going to be with them or those things. OK, and, and just the things that he has given you. So I hope that even encourages you. So he gets ready to leave. And he informs Leah and Rachel. So Leah and Rachel are actually like, yes, we will go. You know, you paid our father a dowry and he has spent it. Read the scripture. Y'all read it. I spent time in it. You know, you've paid our father a dowry. And now our father doesn't have anything for us. We belong to you now. So God has given you what is going to be given to us and for our children. So they understood that in order for them to receive um, a, a transfer of something, they would need to go with where their husband goes, right? They understood the importance of generational wealth. That was actually the first thing. Like, like that was essentially their response to him saying, we have to go. They're like, well, yes, our children depend on it. Our children's children depend on it. My goodness, you know, so uh, I'm telling you, y'all go read it. It will minister to you. You know, folks are like, oh, this wealth transfer. It's too much talk about this and too much talk about that. Y'all, it is a blessing to be able to transfer, to have generational wealth. And it's not just about money again. You know, there's so much God wants to give to us. We, he, we, he wants us to be in his protection under his covering. He wants us to have peace. He wants us to have purpose and be in purpose on purpose. OK, you know, he has a plan for us. So um, they leave. Meanwhile, Rachel takes something that belongs to her father. She takes an idol. Um, so that's ooh ooh that just reminded me Laban and his folks. They served other gods. Rachel took an idol from his house. Jacob didn't know about it. So they go on their way. They take all these things and Laban and some folks come after him. Laban is completely, he is upset. He, he has problems. He confronts his son-in-law <clears throat> and he's like, why did you take, he says, my daughters, why did you take the herd? Why did you take my servants? All these, my, 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 when it, it did not belong to him. It was transferred because the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Come on, somebody. Do you not see that even in this story? Wow. So he he confronts him 
And Jacob said, no, you know, like these things belong to me. Okay. Laban accuses, he accuses him. He accuses Jacob of taking the idol. And Jacob is like, excuse me. No, 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 no. Y'all, he has spent years trying to redeem himself. He knows where he came from, right? But if we're stuck in condemnation, how can we be cultivated in what God has for us, right? If, if we're stuck in every past version of ourselves, how can we step into the purpose that God has for us? So he's done his, he, you know, he's like, I've done my due diligence. I, I worked 14 years. You know, I tried to do, I'm, I'm doing things the right way. And now this chaos around me is happening, but God is going to use it for cultivation. So watch this. <clears throat> the very idol that Rachel stole he, you know, Jacob is like, search the camps, search every tent and see if you find it as a matter of, like he becomes actually quite confident because he had no idea that Rachel actually took it. So he's like, just just search everything. See if you're going to find it. See if you, you know, watch, you know, <laughs> put some respect on my name, you know, go see if you find it. So he searches everything and he doesn't find it. And I believe even in that instance, God was keeping him. He didn't allow the father-in-law to find it. He, he didn't, you know, so where we may feel like, okay, where people are coming at us, they are accusing us left and right. And sometimes we can become so defensive. We feel like we forgot, we forget that God is our defense attorney. My God, we forget that God has our back. And the night before Laban even came out, he showed up to Laban in a dream, a dream. And he says, you better not touch him essentially. Right. So Laban went out there, but he said, OK, after the searching and he didn't find it, uh, he says, let's come into covenant with each other that I'm not going to harm you. You're not going to harm me. OK, um, but God, God kept Jacob. He, he Jacob didn't have to be defensive. God didn't even la allow Laban to find the idol. God is saying, look, you don't have to. um you know, do the most for your reputation. Just commit your ways to me. I will make your name great. I already made your name great. It's cool. I got you. I got you. And just watch. So Laban goes back home, y'all. God is so good. So Laban goes back. And now it's time for your boy Jacob to confront his past. But now we know what happened. The, the level of hostility in the room was so thick before he left. He left for his life, right? So now he's going back. He's like, what am I going back to? What am I doing? My goodness, am I going to survive this? So much so he sends, he sends his servants, his wives, and his flock ahead of him. He's like, maybe if I make a peace offering with my brother, you know, it will appease him and the strife between us will dissipate. Okay. So he had a really hard time one night so much so that, you know, the angel of the Lord came and they, there was a struggle. Come on. There was this internal conflict. He's like, I, I'm afraid of the past. I don't know if I can make peace with it, but God is saying, hold on to whom much is given, much is required. And I need you to make space for me. I need you. I need to have your full heart. I can't, I don't even want 30% of it, not even 0.3% of it to be stuck in the past or, or to be stuck in the fear of this person or that person. I want the whole thing. Come on. So I can do a big thing within you. So y'all, it took a blow to the hip and not only a blow, right? But now a blow to the hip, a lot, you know, caused Jacob to, 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 um, to grip you know, to grip, to grip the Lord and say, I won't let you go until you bless me because now some things will happen to us, y'all, the chaos. We will experience some chaos that is so painful, whether it's, you know, a divorce or whether it is a, a relationship gone wrong or whether our, our child hurt us or called us out of our name, you know, uh, maybe, you know, we have adult children that left under bad terms, you know, maybe we failed a test and we were working so hard to pass it. You know, sometimes it takes something so painful for us to really plug in and to plug in in the most 
a humble but forceful way. Like, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And the angel looked down and said, look, the way I'm, I'm going to bless you is I'm going to redeem your name. Come on. I'm going to change your name so that you can see yourself the way I see you. So the way that you've been seeing yourself may be through some past lens, but I came to tell you that you are a new creature. Okay. Old things have passed away. Behold, come on, new things. You are new. You are a new creature in God and you have a new name. He named him Israel. He said, your name is now Israel. Okay. So now he goes and peace is, is made between him and his brother. Come on. When a man's ways please the Lord, he will make even his enemies to be at peace with him. So, on, so now they had peace. Okay. And y'all Esau came with army. Like he, he came packing with like, what well, I think it said 400 men or so. Like he came deep and they, they were so at peace. Come on. There was a transfer of peace. They were so at peace with each other that he said, how about you take some of my, my army, some of my military. And, and Jacob was like, no, that's okay. Right. We're going to meet again. Oh, a transfer of peace after letting go of some issues of the past, after forgiving, come on, who is God asking you to forgive? Come on, who is God asking you to call and say, I'm sorry? You know, who is God, like, what is God shaping in your mind so that there isn't pride in you or you're allowing your own way to, uh, to lead the way, but you're letting God have his way in you. Come on, right? There's a transfer of peace. Okay, so now uh, Jacob now named Israel and his people settled down and something else happened, y'all. Something else happens. What else happens? Another challenge. His daughter, um, his daughter was actually raped uh, by this, by this man uh, in this town. Uh, let's see if I can, let's see, this is around chapter 32, I believe. Around chapter 32, let's see. So his daughter is then raped and uh, his sons were away uh, somewhere. Uh, and then the guy uh, that raped uh, one of his daughters wanted to make a, a covenant with, um, with Israel. And um, I was trying to find it, but let me just go ahead and continue for the sake of time. Please go and read it. All right. So when I think now we're in chapter 32, 33. OK, so the male that raped the daughter wanted to um, make a covenant with Israel. He said, please let me marry her. I have fallen in love with her. And Jacob informs and I'm saying I'm going back and forth with Jacob, you know, versus Israel because it still uses Jacob um, in the scriptures, even though now his new name is Israel. So his sons come back and he informs his sons, his sons of what happened. So the deal that he came to with this with this guy was, all right, y'all aren't circumcised. If y'all become circumcised, then we can do this exchange where I give you some of my sons and then you give me some of your daughters and we can live peacefully with each other. So this guy agrees to this as Jacob is in agreement and he goes and tells his people about this. And he says, look, we're going to do this exchange. We're going to live as one body. Not only that, they have all of these assets because having assets, having um, animals and servants and all these things, you know, were seen as valuable because it is. And they said, eventually it's going to become ours. Jacob has no awareness about the conversation that's going on that like these people are like, like this stuff is going to be ours, you know, at some point. So they're, they're hoping for a transfer, <laughs> a transfer of wealth, you know, uh, to happen. They, they want to take essentially what belongs to Jacob. Right. So, all right. So the plan goes forward. They, all the men, all the boys become circumcised. What happens next? The, there are two sons, Simeon and another son. They go um, and they take swords. On the third day, it says that the men were still sore and healing. They actually go and they kill all of the men. 
you know, so as sad as that is, right, they they take they they kill all the men and they take um, the wives, um, the women and the children um, as as captive. What happens next? Jacob becomes so distraught. He's like, oh, my goodness. Like I made a, I came into covenant with these people like I. My like I'm ruined, he says, I'm ruined. I just imagine making a promise. And this is not just some some light thing. You know, when you make a covenant with someone, you honor it. You know, um, it's almost like like in this day and age where you have a, a like a serious contract that binds like their word was that good. Like their word was almost like a contract, how we see contracts nowadays where you could take somebody to court and sue them. So he's like, well, I, you know, like I am ruined. He's so upset again, like reputation. <laughs> He's like, whoa, my reputation. You have ruined me in, in, in front of these people. You've ruined me. And he, you know, the, the next, actually the next scripture goes into the next chapter. And the first thing I see is that God, God's response to it, right? So he's like, you've ruined me. But God's response to it was get ready and go to the place called Bethel, where I told you you would return. That's God's response to it. He says, get ready to go. So again, chaos is breaking out. And he's worried about his reputation. But he's like, get up and go. God is the God. He, he's a God that, that restores. He's a God that redeems. He's a God that honors. He's a God that protects. We don't have to worry about reputation. And, and y'all, oh, here's another download. Jacob, again, he had no awareness of the conversation that these people were having, you know, in terms of even taking, trying to take what belonged to them. He said, we're going to take, we're, this is going to be ours, right? But God knew that. How many of us need to thank God? Sometimes things happen in our lives. And again, people walk away from us and it, it hurts us, but you don't know what came with what walked away. There are some folks who, who like that are cursed, but they show up in the form of a, of a person, right? And then maybe one day you pray a prayer of protection, you ask God to order your steps, and then suddenly the guy broke up with you, or the girl broke up with you, or something happened, and you're like, or you didn't get the position, and you're like, why God? And you didn't realize that it came with a curse. You didn't realize it came with being yoked up with the wrong person, with the wrong people. Come on. Let's thank God for the things that you don't even know. <laughs> Let's thank God for what you don't even know about. Let's thank God for what he has saved you from that you're not even aware of. Come on, somebody. He says, get ready. Go to the place. Go back to the place that I told you, you know, you're going to spread on, spread out on. You're going to settle on. What does he do next? He, Jacob, Jacob, I imagine, you know, he wipes his tears. He tells everybody, get rid of your idols. Come on, get rid of all these things, these ungodly things. And I was like, wow. The very idols, you know, like, I was like, how did, how did he even know that they were carrying idols? How did he know they were carrying things that, you know, perhaps um, they shouldn't have had? Yeah, but clearly he had some awareness, right? So now there is a great purge of, you know, getting rid of things in, in the house, getting rid of things uh, in the tent, getting rid of things that you cannot take with you um, to this holy place, right? This place is holy. And the word of God says, be holy for I am holy. There is a pruning, come on. There's a pruning that is happening so that way fruit uh, can be, um, can, uh, can come forth. Come on. So that way glory, God's glory can be revealed, right? But that pruning has to happen. We have to get rid of some things. And I even challenge you to go through your household, get rid, ask God, ask the Holy Spirit, are there things in my house that should not be here? Do I need to get some rid of some things that were um, given to me in a past relationship? Okay. Do I need to get rid of some things that were passed down generation, generationally that I didn't know carried something that 
Uh, Lord God was against you. Lord God revealed to me what I need to get rid of, even relationships that I need to have healthy boundaries in. Come on, ties that need to be cut. Ask God to even break any soul tie that uh, was a bad soul tie. We know that there are good ones, like one between Jonathan and David. That was a good soul tie. But ask God to reveal to you and he will do it. Come on. <laughs> This is good, y'all, because where he were, where where he was going, come on, where he was going, God blessed him. You know, God blessed him, and the folks that needed to be around him were around him. So there was a ripple effect of, of blessings, but there still needed to be a purging, right, and a, a pruning. Okay, so next they go back um, to that land, Bethel. So essentially that, you know, that is where, um, like, that's where I, I stopped reading. And then I just want to tie in Psalms uh, chapter 80, where the psalmist is talking about how God has transplanted a vine from Egypt. And so this is, this is like, this is fast forward this is fast forward. Let's see when the children of Israel are in Egypt and they have become enslaved. And so it's talking symbolically, right? Again, just, you know, God will talk in a way, it, it will talk about the vine and the branch and, you know, how we, we have to be connected where we are dependent on God. It's not, a, it's not for us to just be making our own, uh, you know, um, establishing our own plans, right? God knows what's in our hearts. There's another scripture, y'all. I, I got to give you the word, Proverbs 16 and 9. It says, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps, right? So we're meant to, to be in this partnership with God. We belong to him, okay? So anyways, the children of Israel uh, were enslaved, but in, in the scripture is speaking symbolically about how God transplanted, okay, a vine from Egypt, and then he drove out the nations and planted it. He cleared the ground for it. So, and it took root and it says that vine, something so small, come on, somebody's like, how can God do this with Sheba Enu? I've never seen this done before. Look, he, he has done things before. You just have to have an open heart and read the word so that you can have a deeper revelation. It's not just for the one that's drinking, come on, you, the, you, the, the new one, the new, um, uh, Christian who's drinking, uh, who's still drinking milk. I'm talking to the folks that like are like, oh, come on, I want that meat, okay? Not just the meat that that uh, perishes, but that meat that endures that endures forever, y'all. So uh, you know that uh, that meat is for the mature Christian, okay? So I understand. Um, yes, he's speaking. He's talking about the vine. He's talking about the children of Israel. He cleared the ground for it. It took root, and it says. It filled the land so much so that the mountains were covered with its shade and the mighty cedars with its branches. It says its branches reach as far as the sea. It shoots as far as the river. Just like he told them, look, your descendants are going to be uh, so much so like the dust of the ground from the east to the west and from the north, of, north to the south. OK, God, I mean, y'all, he will do it was something that may look small, little as much when God is in it. Okay. He will do big things with something that you and I may perceive as small. And again, the, what he will do with it, you will, you will know that it was him. That all you can say is, but God, only God, only God did this. Come on, y'all like read Psalm chapter 80, Like just let that minister to you. It was talking about how essentially they had gotten into disobedience, right? They're getting yoked up with the wrong people, <laughs> right? Um, and it says, oh, like, why have you broken down its walls? Come on. Why have you allowed boars from the forest to ravage it, insects from the fields to feed on it, but return to us, God Almighty? Look down from heaven and see watch over this vine. Come on. You know, the vine is cut down. It's burned with fire. At your rebuke, the people perish. But but revive us. Revive us. 
revive us. Y'all, this is a time of revival. You know, this is a time where God is saying, I'm going to shine my face upon you. Come on, I'm raising you up. OK, you know, little is much when God is is in it. And I'm going to do a big thing, a big thing that you have not seen before. Come on, this is for somebody. You know, I prophesy that you, you're going to allow God to do a work in you to prune you. You're going to begin to see that the chaos that has been uh, that has been. Um, happening in your life was just an opportunity for God to uncover things that you didn't even realize was realize was there. Come on, just like Jacob didn't know Rachel had took had stolen the idol. You know, God led him into a situation where a purging had to happen because those idols could not go with him to the next place that he was going. Come on, it was an opportunity to get rid of some things that could have hurt him where he was going, that could have allowed him to sabotage himself where he was going. God is uncovering things um, with your children. That This happened to me even this week where I didn't know my daughter was in, getting into some things on her phone, right? I had no clue. I was so focused on on other things and just trying to make sure I'm 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 I'm, I'm reading my word or trying to make sure I'm doing this right and doing that right, right? But God pruned. <laughs> he uncovered some things so I could see and I could correct so it, there could be correction there. So then I you know, I so that way I wouldn't just see it from a victim standpoint of why are these things happening? No, it's like Let's make sure you're paying attention, okay? Let's make sure you're you're supervising in the right way and you're spending time with your children and then that you're building their relationship with God and you're you're affirming who they are in Christ, okay? That you're not just doing all this work but uh, you know neglecting um, what God has given you at home. Come on, somebody. And, you know, and I'm not saying it from a judgmental standpoint because I don't feel bad. Now I feel good that God uncovered it. I feel good that God exposed it. So that way, the, the I, I began to realize that the exposure was needed so that the elevation could happen. Come on, because y'all, the enemy likes to wait until you get to a certain place as well. And then really expose things so much so that you become overwhelmed and now cannot handle all that was given to you as he elevated you. So God is really, I believe, pruning us so that way where he is taking us, right, we can handle those things. The chaos is meant to uncover, right, so that we can be cultivated. Hmm. There is an eruption happening so before the elevation happens. So that way we can handle what he has in store for us. I, I just pray that this bless you all, my God. Like it really did minister to me. It ministered to me even as I was sharing this with you. So God bless you. Please like, um, subscribe, and share this with someone. If you want to bless the ministry, there's some information below. Um so that you can be a blessing. And I just thank you. I love you, dear Lord. I just thank you so much for your word. I thank you, Lord God, that it is sharper than any two-edged sword. I thank you, Lord God, that you are helping us to um, just step into the authority that you've given us. You're teaching us how to war um, strategically, Lord God, in the spirit, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for how you're opening our eyes to see that you're wanting us to correct some things in private. Lord God, we don't want to be a, a public success, but Lord God, there are things that are just falling all over the place privately, Lord God. But Lord God, Jesus, let us be a private success, Lord God. Lord God, and you said when we do these things in private, you will reward us publicly, Lord. So I just thank you for what you're uncovering in our lives that we didn't know about. The things that are, are not good, Lord God, Jesus, that are not that are wicked, that are righteous, Lord God, that we need to realize, Lord God, Jesus, so that way, Lord God, you can do a work within us so you can, so we can have renewed minds, Lord God, so we can be transformed, Lord God so that we can really, really step, Lord God, be able to step and follow you and hear your voice, Lord God, and have clarity and have peace and have focus. I thank you, Lord God, Jesus, for, Lord God, the variety of things that you want to transfer to us during this time. Let us be open. Let us humble ourselves, Lord God, Jesus, so that we can receive everything, everything, everything that you have in store for us to receive Amen. Amen. Take care.
God bless.